Hello and welcome to General Organic Chemistry Part 4B. We're still doing resonance effect and in this we're going to be looking today in the basic movement of electrons. Now let's understand what does the basic movement of electrons imply. Now uh, basically we are looking at situations where we should be able to draw resonating structures. Now there is a particular rule based on which resonating structures can be drawn. So we need to understand what those rules are. Now remember these structures as such don't exist. The actual structure is a hybrid of these. Since it is not possible to draw the hybrid, so we are going to draw the non-existent parent structures using which we may be able to understand a bit about the actual hybrid. Therefore, we are going to look at the movement of electrons from the point of view of drawing resonating structures. Now, let's start with this particular situation. There is an atom A. There's a lone pair associated with A and there's a bond attached to A. Now, the bonded electrons could move away from A like this. A full arrow implies two electron movement. A half arrow would imply a one electron movement. So, now I'm seeing full arrow. The tail of the arrow is in the bond which implies bonded electrons are moving away from A and since it's a full arrow both electrons are moving away from A. Now remember this is a covalent bond one of the electrons here belongs to A so when both electrons move away from A it means A will end up getting a positive charge a positive charge because A has lost one electron of its own so the result of this would become this. A still has the lone pair but it doesn't have the bond anymore and A is plus. A is plus because A has lost its own electron. Now it can also so happen that I have A here and the tail of the arrow could be on A and the head of the arrow could be on the bond. Now this means electrons from A are going towards this bond and that means lone pair so the lone pair of A is moving towards the bond. Now remember when these electrons are going to move towards the bond this bond will be the coordinate bond because in this bond both electrons are being sourced from the same atom A and as we all know in a coordinate bond the atom which has both electrons to be giving gets a positive charge and the other atom which ends up getting the coordinate bond is supposed to get a negative charge. Therefore the situation for this is going to be like this because now A has two bonds, A has a double bond and it's got a positive charge. Now this positive charge is not because of lack of electrons it's called a formal charge. This positive charge is because it has formed a coordinate bond and the initial bond remained as it is. One more bond is formed and that bond is made up of these two electrons and therefore A doesn't have the lone pair anymore. The next situation would be the reverse of this situation where the electrons from the bond come towards the bond of A. Okay, so there is some source of electrons here. That pair of electrons is coming here. So this means a bond is being formed here by two electrons, none of which belong to A. So A is the receiver of this co so called coordinate bond. So there is going to be a double bond here in the result, and A will get a negative charge because of the coordinate bond. And then we can even have a situation like this both electrons from the bond of A move towards A. Obviously the bond would disappear now and since both electrons are moving towards A one of these electrons of this bond belongs to another atom. So if that also comes to A, A would get a negative charge and the bond vanishes. Result is this. So now let's this, uh, uh, see the situation in a, in, a, in a real molecule. Let's look at this situation. Now I'm going to show you the arrow and you need to predict what the result of this is going to be so the arrow goes like this so what do you think is going to happen the tail of the arrow is in the bond the head of the arrow is on B and if you want to work this out while I'm uh, uh, while watching this video you can pause the video right now try your uh, try writing your structure and then you can play it back to see whether you what you've done is correct or not now the answer is that obviously both electrons of this bond will go to B so one bond will disappear one electron of this bond belongs to A, A lost that electron so A is going to become plus, it is something like this so A is going to lose that electron, B is going to gain this electron for B it is something like this, electrons going towards A so the result is going to be a single bond between A and B 
A getting plus and the B getting negative. Let's see one more situation. Okay, now here it's going to go like this. Now remember, a bond can only move towards the adjacent atom or the bond can move to the adjacent bond. That's all a bond can do. A bond electrons can only shift to the adjacent atom or to the adjacent bond. So I've already, we've already seen the adjacent atom movement, we see the adjacent bond movement. Obviously this bond now becomes comes here. A lo loses its own electron plus. For B, the situation is like this. It gets a coordinate bond, it gets negative. And for B, there is no loss or gain because whatever loss occurred from here, you know, that has been compensated here. So B's electrons remain with B. Situation is A positive, single bond B, double bond C negative. And let's see one more situation. Lone pair situation, the bond goes like this. And you know, this is the typical situation of this situation. So A is definitely going to become this. And as far as B is concerned, it is like this. So B will end up becoming the minus. So it's A double bond B, A gets a plus, B gets negative, and there's no lone pair on A. So this is the basic movement of electrons, and it is this that we're going to use now in the in starting various types of resonance, and we'll see how to draw resonating structures in each one of those cases. Thanks for watching.